There are so many different books and articles about the system with great ideas that are sitting in libraries and shelves and PDF documents, etc. None of those things really matter unless they're put into practice. And that is one of the main focus of Center for Juvenile Justice Reform. How do we take the best research that has been completed and how do we actually make it happen on the ground? When I was contacted about being a co-author for the Youth in Custody Practice Model, I thought it was a great idea to have a document that guides the system around best practices. The Youth in Custody Practice Model Initiative is a research-based approach to serving young people in facilities and upon community re-entry. And so the initiative guides agencies and facilities through a process that they can use to assess their own policies and practice compared to what we've set forth in the practice model itself as best practice, and then use the process to develop and implement action plans that are designed to address those gaps and enhance practice. One of the reasons why we decided to develop the youth and custody practice model was there had been much talk in the country about the need to depopulate residential programs, to serve more kids effectively in the community, but we also saw the fact that there would still be many youth going into placement. There are many dimensions to the model, but there are two basic tenets. One was, how do we develop a set of practices and policies that are best supportive of the staff who work in those facilities? It's a challenging population. The more serious offenders, higher levels of needs, go into those residential placements, and many systems are not prepared well to deal with it. And two is, how do we develop a more developmental approach in working with young people who are in residential placement after disposition? The majority of the staff who come to work here come to help and come to do good work. But then depending on what the environment is, if they're coming to work scared for their safety every day, it changes their mindset. You can't just ask a staff to do something differently. We have to provide them the training, the tools, and the resources that they need to do the work. And that is precisely where the role of leadership comes in. If we can cite examples of other systems or if we can share data from the existing practices that we have, then they'll ultimately begin to believe. They have to see that it actually works. The Youth in Custody Practice Model is really the first time that I'm aware of nationally that people have really taken on that quality piece. How are you doing? How can you improve practices? It's given us a little more discipline to take the quality steps to improve our secure residential treatment program. The Youth in Custody Practice Model allows us to have a blueprint. And because we're able to have a benchmark, as we implement policy and practice changes, we're able to see changes over time, which results in outcomes being improved for children and families in the long term. Generally, as a country, I think we can do much better Rather than approaching the youth as a victim or a villain, looking at the youth as incredible, beautiful human beings that could become contributing members of their communities. If we can begin to really weave that into the culture that we're creating, as well as into the mindset of the youth, and then support them when they return back to the community, we can really begin to plant the seeds of a new future, not only for the youth, but for the communities that they go back into.